Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Eborn, and I'm here today on behalf of the marketing team with School Health. I'd like to thank you for joining us today and participating in our SCA Straight Talk webinar. As many of you know, sudden cardiac arrest is the number one killer of student athletes and is the leading cause of death on school campuses. During Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month, we highlight ways that your school can be prepared to respond to a cardiac emergency. Joining us today is Julie Walker. Julie is the director of the Peyton Walker Foundation, which is a national award-winning foundation helping to provide free heart screenings for teenagers. Very much appreciate Julie's generosity, uh, taking her time out of her busy schedule to be, be here with us today. And we'd also like to thank each of you for joining. We know that you're dealing with a lot of pressing issues each day, especially during the pandemic, and we hope that this is an hour well spent for each of you. I'd also like to thank our friends at Zoll who have partnered with us to bring you this webinar. Uh, Zoll has generously provided a Zoll AED Plus, which we will be giving away today to one lucky attendee. Uh, we will draw our winner after Julie's presentation, but before we turn to our, our questions and answers, and, and just a quick, quick note on the winner of this Zoll AED Plus, uh, it must be donated to a school, a nonprofit organization, or a foundation of your choice. And yes, you can donate it to your school, um, but the, the requirements from Zoll are that it needs to go to a school, a nonprofit organization, or the foundation of your choice. Before I turn the time over to Julie today, I would like to review a few quick things about today's webinar. First, we will not be taking audio questions, but you can submit your questions through the questions interface in GoToWebinar. You can submit your questions anytime during the presentation. Julie is going to take about 45 minutes for her presentation, after which we will answer your questions in the order that they are received. This webinar will of course be recorded and a link to it will be posted on the schoolhealth.com website. We will also email a link to each of you for future playback. And everyone who joins us uh, live today will be receiving a certificate of attendance and you should be expecting that in your email uh, later this afternoon. Lastly, if you are having technical difficulties with the audio or visual portion of today's webinar, please call GoToWebinar directly at 855-352-9003. Again, that number for GoToWebinar is 855-352-9003. And now let's turn the time over to Julie. Thank you, Ryan. An early morning phone call instantly initiated me into the worst club that no parent wants to join. But before we talk about that call, I'll tell you about another call. It was right around this time in October of 2013, and it's hard to believe that it's seven years ago already, when a very dear friend of mine, whom I hadn't spoke to in a while, called to check in. I call her my sister from another mother. And during the conversation, Maggie said to me, so how are you really? And my response honestly will haunt me forever because I said, you know, Maggie, things are absolutely wonderful. My life is so perfect right now that it actually scares me. It's almost as though I anticipated something bad was about to happen. Just a few weeks later, on Saturday, November 2nd, 2013, my husband and I had just sat down to enjoy breakfast, and it was one of those picture-perfect fall days here in Pennsylvania. I looked out the kitchen windows into our backyard. The sun was shining. The sky was this brilliant blue. There was not one cloud in the sky. And all the leaves on the trees in our backyard were this brilliant golden yellow. And I sat there savoring the moment and, and I was holding a hot cup of coffee in my hands and I had just made pumpkin walnut pancakes and warm maple syrup. So the smell was intoxicating. It was just perfect. And I sat there thinking, wow, I am so blessed. What a beautiful life I have. 
And then my husband's cell phone rang. And my life as I knew it and loved it was over. It was the president of King's College, which is located in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, where my daughter Peyton was a sophomore. He was calling to tell us that our daughter had just been taken by ambulance to the hospital, but he didn't share much information. And we were too stunned and shocked to even think to ask questions. We didn't know what happened, why she was taken in an ambulance, or what was even going on. So as you can imagine, we just began to scramble trying to figure out a plan. Wilkes-Barre is about a two hour drive from our house. So we were trying to get ready to get out the door and then our phone rang again. But this time it was the emergency department from Wilkes-Barre Hospital. And the nurse was calling to tell us that our daughter had just been brought into the ER in full cardiac arrest. What does that even mean? I mean, my brain couldn't process what my ears were hearing. My husband did have the wherewithal to ask, is she breathing on her own? And the nurse responded, no, I'm sorry, she is not. And let me tell you, that's when the panic started to build. We were told to get to the hospital as quickly and safely as possible. And I, and I have to say it was the longest two hour drive of our lives. We wanted to get there, but we didn't want to get there. We didn't, we didn't know what we were going to face. And throughout the drive, the dread continued to build. It was absolutely just shocking, terrifying, bewildering. It's hard to describe. Um, and then we arrived at the emergency room parking lot and I immediately looked and saw two priests in the waiting room. So I knew right away. And as I sat in the car, I had to make the most difficult decision in my life to open the car door and go face the worst thing imaginable. We did not get to say goodbye to our beautiful, sassy, storytelling, larger than life daughter that day. And we learned um, Peyton had suffered a sudden cardiac arrest in her apartment that morning. She was getting ready to go to work. And ironically, she was working in the emergency room as a scribe to meet her clinical hour requirement um, as, far to, as part of her physician assistant program requirements. Her roommate had found her laying on the floor of the apartment and she immediately ran for help, but it was too late because they started CPR, EMS responded, but there was just nothing that could be done. And I, I can sit here and as I describe it, I remember like it was 10 minutes ago. And like I said, it was seven years ago, but I remember sitting in the emergency room all day long and I was absolutely stunned. I could not cry. I could not speak. I was just completely bewildered and paralyzed. Like it was an out of body experience. And I, I just felt completely disconnected from myself. As we left the hospital that day, a nurse handed me a bag with Peyton's belongings. And honestly, that bag sat in my living room for five weeks. I, I just could not bring myself to open it up. And finally, I worked up the courage to open it one night. And when I did, every hair in my body stood on end. I had reached into the bag and I pulled out this long sleeve red t-shirt that Peyton had been wearing the day she died. And in white lettering on that t-shirt, it said, what we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others in the world remains and is immortal. Seriously, this is the shirt she was wearing the day she died. And we thought, wow, if this isn't a message from Peyton, I don't know what is. I mean, she was always known for having the last word and she definitely got the last word that day. So shortly thereafter, we decided to launch the Peyton Walker Foundation and our mission is to increase awareness and survival rates of sudden cardiac arrest. We had to do something to honor Peyton's dream. She wanted to work in healthcare, be a physician assistant. And we also wanted to work to save other families from this devastating heartache that we will live, live with for the rest of our lives. 
We have learned so much about sudden cardiac arrest since losing Peyton that day. And I certainly never wanted to become a subject matter expert on sudden cardiac arrest, but here we are. And I hope um, that you learned something today, one small takeaway from this discussion, something, anything that can help you to save one young heart and save one family from the hell that we live with. On the screen, you'll see this is Peyton. Um, and the family photo, this is the very last family photo that was taken to taken of us. We were visiting um, the Charleston Tea Plantation and a complete stranger walked up and said, can I take your photo? And, you know, as a mom, 95% of the photos that I, I, I'm not in because I'm always the one taking the photos. And I said, you know what? Sure, I'd love to have a family photo. And I am so thankful to the stranger for giving us this gift. So again, getting back to the foundation, our mission is to increase awareness and survival rates of sudden cardiac arrest. Since we launched the Peyton Walker Foundation in 2014, um, we have educated hundreds of thousands of adults and children about sudden cardiac arrest. We provide free heart screenings in central Pennsylvania. So we've screened about 3,500 kids to date. And we've referred about 400 of those kids at our, from our heart screenings for additional follow-up. We have donated over 150 AEDs all throughout central Pennsylvania. We have provided over $90,000 in scholarships to, to the uh, physician assistant students at King's College. And I can proudly say we have saved countless lives. So let's kind of take a deep dive into what is sudden cardiac arrest. And it is a life-threatening emergency that occurs when the heart suddenly stops beating. It strikes people of all ages who seem and seem to be healthy, even children and teens. And I will interject here, it does not discriminate between athletes and non-athletes. When sudden cardiac arrest happens, the person basically collapses, they don't respond, they don't breathe normally, and they may appear as though they're having a seizure because they may be gasping or shaking. Sudden cardiac arrest, is very different than a heart attack. Sudden cardiac arrest is an electrical issue. A heart attack is a plumbing issue. Two completely different things. Sudden cardiac arrest, again, is an electrical malfunction that causes the heart to suddenly and unexpectedly stop beating. It can happen at any age, including children and teens. And again, the person is not responsive, not breathing, and they may gasp or shake as if having a seizure. Whereas a heart attack is because a blockage in coronary arteries interrupts the blood flow. And mostly it's for people over 35. The person is usually awake and breathing. They have chest pain, neck pain. I mean, you, you know the symptoms. Obviously, they're experiencing it. They're awake. There's some signs there that something's going on. So just a quick visual. A heart attack, remember, is a plumbing issue. Think of your kitchen sink. You can see that it's backing up. You know you've got a problem. Sudden cardiac arrest. Think of when you know, you're know you sitting in your living room at home, you're watching TV and all of a sudden, boom, lights out. You have no warning it's coming, no idea that it's about to happen. And it is lights out. And I, I've talked to a couple people who have survived sudden cardiac arrest. I call them the lottery winners because the survival rates are so low. But they all say they had no idea what happened. One person in particular was walking into a store, collapsed, and the next thing he knew, he woke up in intensive care several days later. He had no recollection of the incident, didn't have any feelings or symptoms leading up to it, so it strikes without warning. One of the pieces of information we collected during the registration process was, has there been a sudden cardiac arrest incident with you in your school. And 14% of you responded that you've had students in the school that have had sudden cardiac arrest. 2% responded that parents have had a sudden cardiac arrest. 14% responded that you've had faculty members have had a cardiac arrest. And 8% responded that you've had other individuals on your campuses that have had a sudden cardiac arrest. So a lot of you 
unfortunately, have had some experience with this. I see and there is a little bit of a delay in the slide, so I'll try to buffer some time so it catches up. Let's go through some of the stats on sudden cardiac arrest. It is the number one killer of student athletes in our country. Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death on school campuses, which is why you're all on this call today. Sudden cardiac arrest is the number two medical cause of death in youth under 25. And sadly, survival rates of sudden cardiac arrest are less than 10%, which means 90% of people who suffer sudden cardiac arrest are not surviving. We've got to do better. Sudden cardiac arrest takes the life of one child every hour, every single day. This is a serious health crisis in our country, and yet it is so underreported. Often you'll see a headline and it'll say, child has heart attack. Well, we know kids typically don't have a heart attack. So sudden cardiac arrest is underreported in the media and misreported in the media. And the numbers are not truly accounted for correctly. And remember that every statistic that we just mentioned, it represents an absolutely devastated family that's been left behind. And the ripple effect of losing a young person, just imagine the long lasting impact that it has on classmates and friends when they've lost a friend without warning and suddenly. So we're gonna go over some of the signs and symptoms of an underlying heart issue. These are the giveaways that there could be something going on with these kiddos. Kids fainting or seizure, especially during or right after exercise. That is, the doctors tell me that is the top sign or symptom that there's something going on in the heart and really requires some follow-up. Fainting repeatedly or with excitement or startle chest pain or discomfort with exercise, an erasing heart, palpitations or an irre irregular heartbeat, dizziness or lightheadedness. And I will say, um, and I'll share more about this, I actually um, was diagnosed in my late twenties with a heart condition but not until my late 20s. And in my, in my high school years, I would repeatedly tell my physician that I had dizziness, lightheadedness, you know, especially when I was standing up. And my physician's response was, well, you're tall. And, and that is astounding. It never occurred to him that I could have a hidden heart issue. Um, excessive unexpected fatigue during or after exercise. If you have an athlete who normally recovers quickly during you know, drills and sprints, but all of a sudden it seems like they're really struggling, just keep an eye on them. There might be something going on. And another symptom, excessive shortness of breath during exercise. And here was another symptom that I was displaying. I, my coaches often asked me if I had asthma because I would breathe very heavily during exercise. And apparently it was a sign that there was something really going on with me. So what causes sudden cardiac arrest? Most often it is due to a hereditary heart condition. Um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the leading cause of sudden cardiac arrest in youth. That's actually what I have. Um, I, like I said, I was diagnosed in my late twenties. Uh, Peyton had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We have a little different story than many families because
Looks like we've got an audio issue with Julie. Um, I'm going to okay, ask I'm everybody back. to just. Okay. Can you hear thank me? You, Julie. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where it cut out. Did Did you hear about the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Yeah, that was the part we lost you at. Okay, so hypertrophic, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is actually the leading cause of sudden cardiac arrest in the youth. And as I'd mentioned, I was diagnosed with a heart condition in my late 20s. Once they found it in me, they started checking the kids. We ended, ended up finding it in Peyton. So we have a different angle than many parents who have lost kids to sudden cardiac arrest. Um, Another hereditary heart issue is long QT syndrome, syndrome. And that's actually, they've determined that a lot of babies that die from SIDS have long QT, a suspected long QT syndrome. So these are the two primary hereditary heart conditions that can cause sudden cardiac arrest. Another big issue, viral and myocarditis. And this is in the news right now, because of COVID, and, and they're, they're finding some links between myocarditis and kids who've had COVID. So this is something that's really going to be in the news, something to keep an eye on, especially our athletic trainers that are listening today. Um, just watch these kids that, have, that you know have been exposed to COVID. Uh, other things that cause ca cardiac arrest, car coronary artery abnormalities, commodial cortis, you know, when a kiddo gets hit in the chest with a baseball or a lacrosse stick, that can, that can lead to cardiac arrest. And we're finding more and more often that energy, energy drinks and medications are leading to cardiac arrest. And sadly, many of the heart conditions that cause cardiac arrest are detectable and treatable. So are you prepared for sudden cardiac arrest? Do you know what to look for? Are you ready to react? Can you recognize it? Do you, you know if you see a sudden collapse and the student or faculty member is completely unresponsive, they appear to be having a seizure, they may be gasping for air, their eyes are open and rolling back in their head, if you see this, please recognize it, that it could be sudden cardiac arrest. And then once you recognize, are you ready to react? Reaction includes calling 911, getting the AED, removing the clothing, exposing the, ch the chest, and clearing the area. Make sure it's safe. And once you've reacted, then it's time to begin and initiate the rescue. Begin your CPR, get that AED open and apply those pads and sit and wait for the AED commands. Let it tell you what to do. And if advised, shock and resume CPR. So what does sudden cardiac arrest look like? I'm gonna share a video with you. Um, it does have a little bit of a glitch in it. It's gonna rewind about nine seconds and show it again. So it's 2020, nothing works as it should. So be patient. Um, this is Claire, a volleyball player who collapses in sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, it was about five years ago. So some of you may have seen it, but this is very impactful, worth watching. It's a powerful life and death drama captured accidentally on home video. In the middle of her high school volleyball game, Claire Crawford's heart suddenly stops. They call this sudden cardiac death. Yeah, that is so scary. Claire is a rare survivor thanks to what happened next. The Fox Medical Team's Beth Gallivan is here now with more of Claire's story. Sudden cardiac death. Yeah, that is so scary. Claire is a rare survivor thanks to what happened next. The Fox Medical Team's Beth Gallivan is here now with more of Claire's story. That's an A and Tom. It is really hard for Claire and her parents to watch this video, but they're sharing it publicly to show people how important it is to get trained in CPR and to know how to use an AED. Claire had experienced shoulder pain for a couple of years, but her doctors never suspected her heart, and no one expected this. I was like right about here, and then I staggered a couple steps. 17 year old Claire Crawford is the girl in the video, the one whose heart suddenly stops. Well, I feel nauseous watching it because it's a little scary. It happened here in the gym at Loganville Christian Academy during an October volleyball match. It was senior night. Claire's parents, Eric and Lisa, had set up a video camera across the gym. It was up, up 
up on the stage. You don't expect that it's going to happen at your school, right, literally right in front of you. I had just served, and then I'd set, set the ball up, and then moved back, and then I just remember feeling like I was about to pass out. Claire grabs her chest, then hits the floor in full cardiac arrest. Terrified. Terrified. The camera still rolling. Claire is surrounded. You're very nervous. You're not sure what to do. You're not sure what you're seeing. Julie Sermons, a school administrator and member of Loganville Christian Academy's Code Blue team, trained in CPR by Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, sprang into action, helped by an athletic trainer and a parent who also knows CPR. Claire had lost all signs of life. She wasn't breathing. We couldn't find a pulse. She did not look like there was any life to her. And I, at that point, didn't know what to do. But Julie Sermons did because the Code Blue team had practiced this same drill at least 15 times in the last six years. And instinct and training kicked in. You do the one thing that you know to do, and then you do the next thing, and then you do the next thing. Have someone call 911. Go grab the AED. That AED was only about 30 feet away. Lots of praying. Lots of. I mean, panic and praying. You hear a lot of noise. The machine is constantly telling you what to do. I mean, it, tell, it was telling her to shock, which to Julie and I kind of looked at each other, and she, then she pushed it. And just like that, four and a half minutes after they lost Claire, they get her back. I woke up to one of the ladies in my face that had been giving me mouth to mouth, and the AED machine. It was like shouting CPR, CPR, and the alarm was going off. Claire's heart, which tests later revealed had three severe blockages, had slipped into a fatal irregular rhythm known as ventricular fibrillation or VFib. And it's a rhythm that can only be corrected by a shock. So if I'd like gone down and they hadn't had the AED, CPR would not have been enough to bring me back. I would have had to wait for the ambulance. Walton County EMS got there quickly in about 11 minutes. By that time, Claire was already sitting up and talking. She underwent a triple bypass, then surgery to put in an internal defibrillator. I was just blessed to be in a place where they, it could be treated. So like two weeks before that, I was in Honduras on a mountain and there's no way I w if it had happened then. I would have lived so. And this week, Children's Health Care of Atlanta shared the video of Claire's AED save on its Facebook page. In the first two days, it's been viewed seven million times. One of the comments that sticks out are why would any school not have one of these? And Loganville Christian has three stationary AEDs and two travel ones that go with their sports teams. They were all paid for with grants. Children's Health Care of Atlanta's Project Save trains schools in how to respond to emergencies just like this one. And on Friday, Project Save is holding a drill day. They're asking schools to practice their emergency action plans so that they know what to do just in case. Because Tom and Sine, this was like a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. Everything was carefully coordinated. They had the AED. They had the training. They knew yeah. what to do. They practiced it enough that when it happened, it was like rote. Everybody they just jumped did what they action. knew to do. Yeah. yeah. It's a reminder to all of us to practice and, you know, make sure that it's I'll sort of look around. Where is the AED right. around yeah. me at the gym? Where is it at school? Ask. More yeah. so for high schools, Beth, than like elementary and middle schools? Well, they're training I mean, all schools and they're trying to build teams of administrators in the schools and teachers who like five to ten people who can respond when they have a drill like this yeah. because seconds matter, minutes matter. Sure you know, you've do. got to respond quickly. Yeah. yeah. Glad they did in that case. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Beth. Beth. So you can see that was really a powerful video to see what it looks like when a child has a sudden cardiac arrest. So now that we kind of have the base understanding of what sudden cardiac arrest is, let's do a quick dive into how can we save our kids one heart at a time? And we're gonna start with heart screenings. So what are we missing? If we know kids are walking around with detectable and treatable heart conditions, why aren't we finding them? Well because 90% of underlying heart issues are missed when we're only using the physical exam and the family history. Most heart conditions that lead to cardiac arrest are not detectable by listening to them with a stethoscope. So think about at your house, if you have an electrical problem, are you gonna call a plumber? Never, you're gonna call an electrician. So we've gotta find the electrical problems in the hearts of these kids so that we can prevent this. And often this is really important. I wanna make sure that athletic trainers especially know this. Youth don't report or recognize symptoms of a potential heart condition. 
Number one, they don't want to get pulled from sports, so they don't want to report anything that's going on. And number two, a lot of times kids are, this is normal to them. So they maybe for years have been feeling palpitations and lightheadedness and chest pain. And maybe to them, that's their normal, not even recognizing it's abnormal. This is not enough to protect their hearts. A stethoscope at a sports physical is absolutely failing our kids. So youth heart screenings, by simply adding an electrocardiogram to the pre-participation physical exams, we can identify most heart conditions that lead to cardiac arrest, and we can prevent disabilities and sudden death in the youth. So Ryan, let's launch the polling question that we have for everyone today. Great, we've got that poll up for you now. Uh, you'll be able to see the question and select your answer. Uh, be sure to click submit after you've selected your answer so that we can see uh, how you've responded. So does your school provide heart screenings or electrocardiograms for your students, either during the sports physicals or maybe you work with an organization and host these screenings? We're just curious to see what your involvement is. We'll give just a few more moments for you to get your responses in. All right, just uh, a few last moments here on the poll, and I'm going to go ahead and close this. We can take a look at the results. So it looks like, Julie, if you can see this, we've got the, the results of the poll that are up on the screen now. Okay, I'm not able to see them, but so what are, what's the result? It looks like we've got uh, 6% uh, responding that yes, the school does provide heart screenings or electrocardiograms, and 94% have responded no, that their school does not provide screenings or electrocardiograms. Okay, very interesting. Thank you, Ryan. We can close that down. Mm -hmm. We'll go back over to the slides. Julie, just a, a quick note. I can see your mouse on the screen. Okay. Thank you. All right, so youth heart screenings. Again, if we provide an electrocardiogram, it is a quick, painless, non-invasive test that measures and records a moment in time of the heart's electrical activity. It provides information about the structure, the function rate, and the rhythm of the heart. It can identify two-thirds of heart conditions that lead to sudden cardiac arrest, a simple electrocardiogram. Why aren't we checking kids' hearts? We check their eyes and ears. Think of all the times we have to do physicals on the kids throughout the school year. We make sure they have protective gear for sports. We're investing so much money in the best helmet, the best shin guards, the best lacrosse sticks. We check for hernias. And we test for concussion symptoms. But we don't check their hearts. Just think about that and let that sink in. We have to do better. So we were inspired, and if you see where my mouse is, um, down in the lower left corner, we were inspired by the Cody Stevens Foundation. These, fo these folks are from the uh, state of Texas. Today actually would have been Cody's 27th birthday. Cody was a larger than life football player, six foot nine, about to graduate high school, go play football in college. He sat down on a Sunday afternoon to take a nap and he never woke up. He had an undetected heart condition and died of sudden cardiac arrest. So his family set out to save other families from this heartache and they worked on getting Cody's, Cody's law passed in the state of Texas. It took six years and three tries and they finally did it. Last June, Cody's law became the first law in the United States to provide parents with information about the importance of heart screening and testing for students and helping to find hidden heart issues. So I'm like, hey, if Texas can do it, we can do it in Pennsylvania. So we got a great partner and we introduced legislation last August. And I am incredibly proud to say that 
in under 12 months during a pandemic and during the most contentious time in political history, we were able to get a law passed unanimously in Pennsylvania that will help to provide parents and students with life-saving information. So we basically use the PPE form as an information tool for parents and students. This is part of the sports physical forms that the kids have to fill out. And on those forms, we're including information about sudden cardiac arrest. We're defining it, reviewing the signs and symptoms because many parents and students don't know. We talk about the risks of playing with symptoms and, re and th this law requires that students that have symptoms, they have to be pulled from sports and they can't re return to sports until they're cleared by a physician. And we also educate parents about the benefits of adding an electrocardiogram to sports physicals. Information truly is power. Education can be life savings, life saving because families now know to ask for an electrocardiogram. And our law does not make it mandatory. It is completely optional. It's paid for by the family. And it can be covered by insurance when using the proper ICD-10 codes. And we're so excited because this is finally sweeping across the US. Again, started in Texas, Pennsylvania became the second state, but there's additional states now working on this legislation. Hopefully your state's on that list. If not, we'd love for somebody to take the lead and, and get working on this. So why add an electrocardiogram? This is Brendan O'Connor. Brendan was 22 years old. He was a college athlete on scholarship who played lacrosse after college joined the Marines. Never once did he ever have a heart electrocardiogram. Brendan and his brother were practicing lacrosse in the Philadelphia area. Brendan suffered sudden cardiac arrest on the field and died. This is JT Kuhn. JT was a sophomore in high school, big time basketball player. JT's mom went in, into his room one morning to wake him up for school. He was completely unresponsive. He was life flighted to the nearby hospital, stayed alive for a few days and eventually passed away. JT, like Brendan and like Peyton, all, all had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. JT's was undiagnosed. He'd been exhibiting symptoms. He'd been complaining to the doctors and they never checked his heart. Why do an electrocardiogram? Wiz is why. Wiz came to our very first heart screening. Wiz was adopted from Haiti, so the family really didn't know his family history and health background. We found a pretty significant heart issue with Wiz. He now always makes sure there's an AED on the sidelines where he plays and practices sports, and he will be followed by a cardiologist for the rest of his life. Sam is another why. Sam didn't want to come to our heart screening. She said, I'm fine. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. But her family urged her to come because the family said, well, let's go support the walkers. You know, they're offering this free heart screening. We should make sure everything's OK. So Sam came and we actually diagnosed her with Wolf Parkinson White, for which she had to go and have a surgical procedure and ablation done. Everything's fine. Sam will never have another issue with her heart because of Wolf Parkinson White. But had she not had an electrocardiogram, it would not have been diagnosed and she could have been lost to sudden cardiac arrest. So we go into schools and uh, provide heart screenings. We work with all different major healthcare systems in our area. These are absolutely free of charge. We will check the kids, all their vitals, height, weight, blood pressure. We will provide an electrocardiogram. We'll listen for any murmurs. And while we're waiting for the results, we have the kids go through CPR and AED training. And we love the, we love this about our program because it is so interesting to talk to the kids and ask them, hey, do you know CPR? Do you know where your AEDs are located in school? And typically they have no idea where the AEDs are or that they're allowed to use them. If anything comes back abnormal in our heart screening, will then give an, an echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart. And again, that's free of charge. And before the kiddos leave our heart screening, they will have met with a physician, gotten the results of their studies and testing, and they'll know if there's a plan, any follow-up action, or if everything is fine. 
You can find a youth heart screening near you. A great resource um, is the Parent Heart Watch website. There are many, many grassroots organizations like the Peyton Walker Foundation operating all across the country that go into schools and work with healthcare systems to provide heart screenings in a, in a large capacity for kids. We screen a couple hundred at a time. There's an organization in California that screens up to a thousand kids in a day. It's remarkable. This is a great resource to find heart screenings in your area. So now that we've talked about how to enhance physicals, how to find these issues in kids, how are we gonna save them? So we're gonna talk about the cardiac emergency response plan which I'll refer to as a SERP moving forward. So one of the questions we um, asked during the registration process is, do you have a cardiac emergency response plan in place at your school? And this was an interesting finding. I, I was honestly surprised uh, at the response. 81% of the schools responded, yes, you actually have a SERP in place. And that's great. Um, we're going to work, you know, we really want to encourage the other 19% to, um, to take the information that we're sharing today and change this. But even for those who do have a SERP in place, I promise you there's some good nuggets coming up um, and some good reminders that we hope that you'll implement. So let's go back for a minute. So if sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death on school campuses, many schools don't have a SERP and don't practice cardiac response drills. And even some schools that have the SERP still don't practice the drills. But we're going to give you some help, I promise. I'm going to give you the easy button today. So there's five components of a, of a SERP. First one, do an AED inventory and assessment. Develop a response team and a response plan. Get training in place and then do your drills. So we're going to dive into those just a little bit more detail. So your AED assessment. The placement of the AED, make sure it's accessible from any part of the building or campus within a quick two to three minute walk. And when we say accessible, look at this, make sure it's not locked up. You know, after school hours, oftentimes there's a gate pulled across to separate for the gym from the school. Make sure the AED is not on the wrong side of that gate. Make sure it's not locked up in the nurse's office or locked up in the school main office. Make sure it's on a wall or accessible throughout the day. Make sure there's clear signage installed so people know, oh, there's the AED, that it's easily recognizable. And make sure that it's checked for performance readiness. You know, batteries, I can't tell you how many times we have walked into schools and other places, check the AED and hear the batteries have been expired, that they're dead, the pads have been expired for years. So it's not enough just to have an AED. It is a responsibility to make sure that they are maintained well. And one thing I love, this is what I wanted to share, even those who already have a SERP in place. Here's a great nugget. Um, this is a project. PIAA is the Interscholastic Athletic Association that oversees all of the school athletics in the state of Pennsylvania. We work prim uh, primarily with District 3, and that's about 125 high schools in our area. And what we're doing is they're making this announcement at all their sporting events and even all the events at the school. And this costs absolutely nothing. So we encourage you to take this back to your schools and get this implemented. At the start of every game, every game, this announcement's read, ladies and gentlemen, sudden cardiac arrest is the leading killer of student athletes in the US each year. District three and the Peyton Walker Foundation have partnered to make SCA awareness a top priority again this year. We ask your attention to the following. In the event of a cardiac emergency, the nearest AED defibrillator is located at the concession stand or wherever it is. Thank you for your attention to this important matter. So again, we encourage you, this, is, this costs nothing. It takes under 30 seconds to make the announcement and it really helps to raise awareness about sudden cardiac arrest and to raise awareness about telling people to look for an AED when there is a cardiac emergency. So the next step is getting your emergency response team in place. Um, who is the coordinator going to be to oversee this? And assemble five to 10 people. Predominantly about 10% of your staff should be on the, the response team. And then get your plan ready. 
You can create your written SERP that's reviewed annually. Develop an active crisis communication plan. Know how you're going to let everyone on the, the response team know when there is a cardiac emergency. And work with your local EMS. Um, they, they are more than willing to jump in and offer support in helping you develop and maintain your SERP plan. And then share it with those groups that are on your school campus, maybe in the summer or after school hours. Anyone who use the can uses the campus should be aware of the SERP plan. Training, organize and host the training for the response team, Res refresh those skills. And make sure your, all of your faculty and staff know where the AEDs are located and how to access them. And this is going back to the point that I made you know, during our heart screening when we offer the AED CPR training for the kids. They don't know where the AEDs are located and they think they're not allowed to use them. So we've got to change that. Um, review the warning signs and uh, how to recognize sudden cardiac arrest with your entire faculty. So another question we had asked is your school offer CPR and AED education for students? And that was split pretty close down the middle. It was a, that was surprising. We're, we're hoping that this will improve. Pennsylvania just passed legislation last year requiring CPR training as a component for graduation. So we're, we're inching there, but um, there's a great opportunity to really educate students about sudden cardiac arrest, about CPR and how to use an AED. So your response drills, we encourage you to conduct one annually. And going back to the video that I shared, I happened to come across this the other day and I just wanted to share it with you, but because Claire's school practiced response drills, remember in the video they said, you know, we've done this over and over and over again, so it just became automatic. Because Claire's school knew the drill, Claire just got married. I thought this was so amazing. So doesn't everybody want to work together so that more parents can see their children get married? Don't you want to help make that a better outcome? So as far as SERP resources, good news, you don't have to create an entire plan. It has already been done and honestly, you just have to fill in the blanks. I encourage everyone to jump onto the Project Adam website. Um, they have everything you need for a SERP, every, every toolkit you can imagine. So let's go back. Look at these kiddos in these pictures. Not one of their parents ever thought it would happen to their kid. I promise you. And here's my sweet baby right here. These kids look healthy. I mean, I can't drive this point home enough. These kids look healthy. They act healthy. They're active, beautiful, smart, fun kids. And sudden cardiac arrest struck each and every one of them in those photos without warning. So here's your call to action. Review signs and symptoms. Can you recognize sudden cardiac arrest? If you see someone drop quickly, do you know what to do? Do you know it's sudden cardiac arrest? Educate your staff, everyone that you come in contact with about sudden cardiac arrest and advocate for heart screenings. We've gotta find those hidden heart issues that can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. There's 2% of kiddos walking around out there with something going on. Make sure your AEDs are accessible. Make sure they're rescue ready and maintained. Again, here's a great opportunity to implement that AED announcement at your school events and create and manage a SERP for your school. Because I promise you, you do not ever want to be the person that has to make the call that changes someone's life forever. We are going to send a lot of resources out. I think this is all coming in the follow-up email. It's going to include um, an informational flyer. This is a great flyer that Parent Heart Watch put together with us, um, preventing sudden cardiac arrest in student athletes. We're going to send along our Pennsylvania PPE form for school physicals. It's got Peyton's Law language in there as a reference for you. There, we're going to share the link for the video we uh, showed you about Claire. And I say share and scare everyone that you can going to send the Project Adam Toolkit link, um, a great link for Parent Heart Watch. That, that website is a phenomenal resource. There's so many tools and so much information on there, for, especially for school nurses. Um, good, good things on there for you. 
And I'm going to send another link. Zeke Upshaw. Zeke was, a, he played in the NBA for the minor league uh, Detroit Pistons team. I met his mom earlier this year. During a live game, Zeke suffered sudden cardiac arrest and collapsed on the court. And I want you to watch this video because this is everything not to do during sudden cardiac arrest. This is why you've got to be prepared. Imagine when you watch this from the perspective of Zeke's mom, she was driving and watching, not really watching, but she had, she had this on, it was being um, broadcast on Facebook Live. She saw her son laying on the basketball court unresponsive. Um, unfortunately, the medical team didn't react quickly or well and Zeke did die. They won a lawsuit against the Detroit Pistons and hopefully it will affect change in the NBA and beyond. But I encourage you to watch that. It's, it, it is, it, it's a head scratcher when you see it and compared to how they reacted when Claire had her cardiac arrest, that's the outcome we want. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan. We've got a giveaway today. Thank you, Julie. Um, and I just want to add a note, this presentation was incredibly well put together and we really appreciate you sharing your time and your experience with us. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, uh, Zoll has generously donated an AED Plus and uh, we have drawn a winner from our attendees here today. Uh, Deborah from Farmersville is our winner of the Zoll AED Plus and Deborah, you will be able to choose a school, uh, including your own school, or a charity or a foundation to be able to donate this uh, AED Plus from Zoll uh, to. So congratulations, Deborah from Farmersville. Um, we hope that uh, this uh, gift of this Zoll AED helps to enact uh, change at your school and, and to go towards saving lives. That's fantastic. So we're going to move on to the questions, but again, I want to thank School Health and Zoll for, for giving us the platform to share this message. And obviously, that you took the time to join us. Um, I work tirelessly so that there aren't other moms that lose a child to sudden cardiac arrest, so that other families don't have to go through this heartache. And you are all the front line. You, you're the front facing people. You've got access to the students. Please educate them, educate the parents. Um, you've got a chance to make a difference, and I am so thankful that you, you spent the time with us today to learn more about this. So I'll take any questions, uh, Ryan, if any have come through. Yeah, we've had some questions come through. Let's uh, jump right into them because we're getting uh, short on time. Um, I've got a question from Nicole in Illinois. Uh, how many AEDs should we have at our school? So typically we say an, an AED should be accessible within about a two minute walk um, on campus. If you jump out and use that Project Adam toolkit, there is an entire document on there about how to conduct an AED assessment to see if you have enough um, on your campus. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions about electrocardiograms. And uh, so, We'd just like to talk a little bit, if you would, Julie, about the way that you were able to get the legislation uh, enacted. Um, we've got some specific uh, questions about how you do the screening program, um, at what age, uh, and how often would a, a child need a, a, an electrocardiogram. So if you could just speak to those things for a moment. Sure. Um, for our screenings in particular, we screen kiddos that in the 12 to 19 year old age range. Um, that's typically when you see most of the sudden cardiac arrests and the heart issues will really show themselves. That's an increase in number of sudden cardiac arrests during that age group. So we recommend screening every two years unless the kid presents with new symptoms. Then obviously go see the doctor, report it, and get an updated electrocardiogram. Some physicians are willing and able and open to the discussion of offering electrocardiograms uh, during sports physicals or during a well child checkup. Those are the kind of the up and coming new new mindset, which we'd love that some doctors have that. We, we wish all of them had that. So not all of them are receptive to it. Um, we go into the schools, we work, like I said, with all of the major healthcare systems and their cardiology teams. And, and we when we do a screening, we bring 50 or 60 medical professionals from that um, health system on board. And then we also have about 50 non-medical volunteers that we provide for the foundation. So it's a huge undertaking. 
And you know, the value is, is we say it's like $125,000 value of the service that we provide at, at no, no cost. So it's finding a good partner. We're also working right now with one of our major healthcare systems that provides heart or provides the sports physicals in the schools for the kids. We're asking them, you know what? You need to make this the standard of care, like add an electrocardiogram to your sports physicals, then maybe charge $25 for it or whatever, but figure out a way that when these kids are coming through the sports physicals, make it better. Add an EKG, and if you can't do it that way, then you know, look at maybe possibly hosting the larger screenings, at the very least encourage kids to get screened at their physician's office. And along that line, uh, we're seeing a few questions about insurance. Uh, do you have any experience with uh, insurance billing for these? Is it successful? Uh, is it something that Medicare or Medicaid would cover or a family's general health plan? So we have received some guidance on that. Um, on the informational flyer, the SCA prevention and, and student athletes, there is actually the ICD code, ICD-10 code is printed on that flyer. So if you download that, you'll find the ICD-10 code encourage families and doctors to use that code and it should be covered by insurance. I can't okay. say yes to everything because you can't, you know, it, it's not across the board, but if they use the proper code, it should be covered. Sure. And, and I did see a question asking about that code specifically if we had that uh, available. So I, I think what we'll do, you mentioned uh, the, the information that we're going to be sending out in the follow-up uh, emails. I think what we'll do is, is try to find that code and make sure that we're able to provide that in okay. the follow-up email today. Um, and I've got just a couple of minutes here and I want to ask a question that kind of speaks to, you know, the, the elephant in the room that's happening in, in 2020 and probably will extend into 2021. But during the COVID pandemic, um, how, how do you have any experience with uh, doing these screenings, with uh, teaching CPR and AED uh, to students, you know, how, how are we doing these kinds of trainings and screenings uh, when we're dealing with this pandemic? Well, that, it's really been an interesting challenge for all of us because we are so anxious. We know we're missing kids. You know, we, we know kids are having heart issues and we can't get to them. So a lot of the a lot of the organizations across the country were trying to figure out solutions to get the screening programs up and running again. We're actually hosting, well, the last one we had was in February, so it's been since February since we've had a screening. We're going to do one in December, and we're actually, usually we would go into a school to do it, but this time we're going to do it in a medical center in a cardiologist's office. Um, a bit, it's a big office, so we're going to run the kids through there, complete social distancing, just change the whole way we do a normal heart screening, but at least we're going to get about 100 kids screened that day using their existing medical facilities and their protocols. So it's, it's definitely, we have to change and, and go with the times. As far as CPR, we have successfully been able to um, offer CPR demos. Uh, we have our first certification class coming up this Saturday. So you know, as long as we implement social distancing properly, we are cleaning everything accordingly, um, you know, make sure everything is sanitized. So we're, we're finding workarounds as long as you've got the space to spread everybody out. And obviously now with CPR, there's no mouth to mouth breathing. So that's not even, you know, that, that takes that component out of it, which, which helps us a lot. It surely does, yes. Okay, that's about all the time we have for today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. If we did not get to your question, I apologize. We will uh, do our very best to reach out with you, uh, reach out to you with an answer uh, after the program is finished. Um, I just wanted to say again, thank you to our presenter, Julie Walker, for sharing um, this important and this life-saving information with us. Uh, this has really been a, a great presentation, and, and Julie, I, I really appreciate your time and, and the energy that you've brought to, uh, to this topic today. Um, after everyone exits the webinar, uh, we're going to see a survey window pop up. Uh, we've just got five questions in the survey, and I would ask each of you to participate in the survey just to let us know. Uh, to let Julie know, you know, how we've done here today, if there are things that you have seen that you liked, or if there's things that you wish you could have seen but did not see, please let us know so that we can improve these presentations in the future. And again, uh, we will be sending out a link to the recorded presentation. It will include your certificate of attendance, uh, and it will include uh, the resources that Julie identified earlier in the presentation. 
Uh, you should expect to see, to see that email come out this afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you uh, from all of us here at the School Health Team. Uh, and one last thank you to our partners and friends at Zoll for helping us bring this presentation to you uh, during Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month. Have a great day, everyone.